So uh, over the next few videos we're going to be taking a look at hybrid. Uh, this comes as part of the instrument expansion pack and it's quite frankly an astonishingly powerful synth. Uh, looking at the page you get when you first open it up you can see there are a number of tabs. We have A, sequencer A, B, sequencer B, common, effects and presets. We're going to start obviously with A. Now we'll follow this in order of the signal flow of a synth. Uh, so we'll start with the voice generation stage, the oscillators. Now the default setting uh, for hybrid gives you lots of oscillator 3 and nothing of oscillators 1 and 2. So let's pull down oscillator 3 and turn up oscillator 1. We have various different types of oscillators available. Uh, currently I have saw sync. There are two sync options, uh, saw sync and square sync. These use uh, two oscillators, uh, the carrier or slave oscillator, and this is currently set to a sawtooth. And we have the master oscillator, which is determined by the note played on the keyboard essentially. Now with sync oscillators, the uh, slave is re-triggered at the beginning of every single master cycle. I can control the actual frequency of the slave using this shape control. Let's uh, see what this sounds like. And it's a similar kind of thing for the uh, square sync except our slave is, of course, uh, the square wave. Uh, next, we have uh, the cross-modulation options. Again, saw and, squave, uh, saw and square wave. Uh, now, this uses uh, pitch modulation. So we have the uh, slave oscillator, which is currently uh, at the sawtooth. This is the carrier, and this is modulated by the uh, master oscillator, uh, which is always going to be a triangle wave. Uh, the shape control here is actually the uh, pitch of the uh, sawtooth in this case, and uh, this gives very much FM type sounds. And if we have a quick listen to the square cross modulation, you get some idea what that will give you. Then we have the multi-wave. Multi-wave layers uh, seven different oscillators on top of each other. Uh, they can be all saw or all square. We can go between them here. And the shape control is the tuning between them. And then we have a wavetable. This gives us uh, 64 different waveforms. We can see them all from here. And the shape control, uh, it's a little unpredictable here, but it starts to play with the harmonic content of the uh, wavetable that's being read. Finally, we have a pulse width modulation square wave, and it's a classic square wave that's having its pulse width modulated. And I'll stick to that for oscillator one. Uh, I've got oscillator two here, so let's add a certain amount of this. And I'll leave it on saw sync, see what that sounds like. And I can make them a little bit more interesting together if I start playing with their tuning. So I'll adjust the saw sync in sense, give you sort of a chorusing effect. Now, unless you're particularly interested in the theory behind synthesis techniques, you don't really need to know exactly how these are working 
uh, but it's definitely going to be worthwhile opening them up and trying out what the shape control does to get some kind of idea of what sounds are available. Oscillator 3 is a lot more simple. Uh, we have saw, square and triangle options, uh, level control and sub which I use quite often. This is an octave lower than the main oscillators so uh, I'll add a bit of sub to that. We then have noise as well. Uh, we have different noise types crackle, modulation noise, blue noise and white noise. Adding noise to a signal just gives it some more frequency content and it makes things like filter positions become more obvious. It makes the sounds just a little thicker and more interesting too. So let's try a bit of noise in there. Next we get to the filter and this can be either emulating a DC, digitally controlled filter, or voltage controlled filter. Uh, we've got the filter mode, so currently we have a 4-pole low-pass filter, that would be 24 dB per octave, and we could change the slope rates, we could change it to a bandpass filter, a combination of high-pass and low-pass, which is essentially bandpass but with uh, different slope rates on either side, band reject filters, band rejects and low-pass together, and even all-pass filters which just affect the phase of signals. Again, experiment with them, but for now I'm going to leave this on a more conventional low-pass setting. Then we have our cutoff frequency, so let's see what this does. And resonance, giving us that little bit of a peak just before the cutoff. As you'd hope, uh, if you turn this up high enough, it'll self-oscillate and start to ring giving us our classic filter whistle sounds. We have key tracking, currently turned all the way up, meaning that uh, the higher the note that I play on the keyboard, the brighter the sound will be, because the higher the cutoff frequency will be. Uh, then we have the envelope, and just to the right you can see the filter envelope. Uh, and this controls how much the filter envelope actually affects the filter position. So let's turn this up to demonstrate this. The envelope is a little bit more than your conventional ADSR. Uh, we have attack time. Notice the attack time can go all the way to 32 seconds. Uh, so it's a little bit more sensitive than most uh, filters on envelopes you've been using in the past. Then here I have my uh, decay course I'm putting in more of a hold time here, around about half a second there. And then we have the sustain level, which well kind of controls our decay time as well. And then over here we have our release, which obviously won't do anything unless I start playing with the amplifier envelope and make this a little longer. Uh, let's give a, this a listen. And without the envelope control turned up. We also have a distortion stage. Uh, this is currently set to an overdrive model uh, and I can just do some distortion and here's my distortion amount. And I could choose something far more uh, intense such as bit crush. A bit much, so let's go back to distort. So already sounding fairly interesting. Uh, then we get to the uh, amplifier envelope here. And again we have a conventional attack. And decay with a hold capability. Uh, a sustain level and release and again this can go all the way up to 32 seconds so don't rely too much on the graphics to exactly how you set this pay more attention to what you've got down here uh, in the next video we'll look at the uh, modulation capabilities of this page <laughs>